Well, good evening. We are studying our final macromolecule. Yay! Nucleic acids. So this is the famous one, the double helix. What's that? Whoa! Thing just went crazy. Let's just hold tight for a second. All right, I'm back. So this double helix is the famous nucleic acid, DNA. Look at Google trying to be all sciencey. Um, and so the main function of nucleic acids is information storage. So let's talk about that. So we know that nucleic acids can be the genetic material of our cells. There's some crazy chromosomes over here. That's what they actually look like, like Cheetos, like the, the poofy kind. Um, so that stores information in the cells, such as genes. And those are our blueprints for building proteins. And we'll talk way more about that when we get to molecular genetics. But your DNA is kind of, um, it exactly tells the cells which proteins to make and how to make those um, amino acid sequences, which amino acids to go in which order. Um, so this is one of the central dogmas of biology, one of the central dogmas of genetics, molecular genetics, all of this stuff. In order to say that you have taken AP Biology, you must know this. You must know that DNA information flows in the following direction. DNA to RNA to proteins, meaning that the instructions are in the DNA. RNA is the messenger. And then the final product is proteins. Get it? So DNA contains the instructions. And then our final product is proteins, and to get there um, is RNA. So another function of nucleic acid is to transfer information. Um, it can be a blueprint for new cells. So we have a cell and makes new cells out of this, genetic, um, this nucleic acid. And it can be a blueprint for the next generation. Oh, what's that? Yeah, that's sperm attacking a cell, an egg cell. So some examples of nucleic acids is that RNA. RNA does stand for ribonucleic acid. There's that. Yep, single-stranded, but still a helix. And DNA, our famous example of a nucleic acid. DNA does stand for deoxyribonucleic acid. And that's our famous double helix. And uh, the basic structure here of nucleic acid, the monomer, is what we call a nucleotide. So what makes up a nucleotide? There are three basic parts. You have the nitrogen base. Um, base meaning, yeah, like base, like pH above 7. Um, and that's a ring, and, and that base contains nitrogen. That's where they get the term. So it's a carbon ring with some nitrogen in there. Oh, Dude, what just happened? My goodness. All right, pot. Sorry about that. It's not the most uh, professional production going on over here. So the nitrogen base is a base that is a carbon ring that contains nitrogen. And that's that A, T, C, G, or U, if you're RNA part. Uh, in nucleotides, we have a pentose sugar, pent for five, like pentagram, right? Ose. Rhymes with gross, means it's a sugar, so it's a five carbon sugar. Um, in RNA, that's ribose, hence ribonucleic acid. That's how you can remember it. It's right in the name. Deoxyribose is the name of the sugar in DNA, hence deoxyribonucleic acid. It's right there in the name. And then the third part of a nucleotide is the phosphate group, right there. And then I ask you this, are nucleic acids charged molecules? So take a look at the nucleotide and think about it. Are they charged? And if you said, yeah, they are, because check it out, there's two negative charges right there, you are such a smarty pants because they are negatively charged molecules. And this is really helpful because you want DNA and um, RNA to kind of be controlled. You want RNA to stay within the cell and you want DNA to stay within the nucleus. You don't want it to just be willy-nilly all over the place. Um, and so this charge 
helps it to stay, to not be able to cross membranes. Okay, charged particles do not cross membranes easily. Um, so DNA stays within the nucleus because it's charged, it can't cross the nuclear membrane. Um, RNA, messenger RNA does cross the nuclear membrane with help, and we will discuss that when we get to that part of discussing biology. Um, we can also use this property of nucleic acid being charged in biotechnology. So we can separate DNA knowing that it is charged. We can use that charge idea. And we can put a positive charge at one end of a gel and pull that negative charge DNA towards it. It's really a cool thing. So there are different types of nucleotides, and um, we know that there's A, G, T, C, and U. And hopefully remember that A stands for adenine, G stands for guanine, C for cytosine, T for thymine, and U for uracil. Um, and thymine and uracil are the two that switch places. Uh, thymine is what's in DNA, and uracil is what's in RNA. Um, but this might be new that there are two kind of main categories of nucleotides different types of nitrogen bases. You have purines, which um, have a double ring nitrogen base. So see there's two rings here. And those are our purines. And um, that includes adenine and guanine. And then you have pyrimidines, which is a single ring nitrogen base. So there's only one ring here. And your pyrimidines are cytosine, thymine, and uracil. And a way that you can maybe remember which ones are purines and which one are pyrimidines is that purine is pure silver, AG. You have to remember that AG is the um, element for <laughs> silver. So it's maybe a stretch, but I don't know. You do have to remember purine, adenine and guanine are purines, and uh, cytosine, thymine, and uracil are pyrimidines. So however you get there, that's cool. So uh, a nucleic polymer, so multiple nucleotides attached together, is a nucleic acid. It has a backbone, um, and that's a sugar to phosphate bond. We call that bond a phosphodiester bond. So here we see one nucleotide that's highlighted in blue there. There's another one. And what's highlighted in red there is that phosphodiester bond. So you can see here the five carbon sugar, the phosphate group, the bond is between the sugar and the phosphate group. There's another uh, nucleotide and see if you can guess where that phosphodiester bond is going to be. Kablamo, right there. Good job. You get it. Do you get it? I hope you get it. Um, a new base is added to the sugar of the previous base and the polymer can only grow in one direction. Um, what's really interesting is that the nitrogen base, that's what this yellow harvest gold um, rings here are, that's the nitrogen bases, they hang off of the sugar phosphate backbone. Why do you think that's important? Think about that. Well, that's because they pair up in DNA, right? DNA is a double helix. So the nucleotides bond between the two strands. So here's one strand, you have the phosphate group, the sugar, phosphate group and sugar, you have one backbone. And then you have the other strand, you have the other backbone. The bases are dangling in between and they're bonded together. And again, they're bonded together through hydrogen bonds um, and they bond purine uh, to, sorry, purine to pyrimidine. So that's something to keep in mind. So adenine to thymine, guanine to cytosine. Um, between adenine and thymine, thymine, there are two hydrogen bonds, and between guanine and cytosine, there are three hydrogen bonds. And matching up these bases, that's pretty important stuff too, right? So taking a further look at the DNA molecule, we know that it's a double helix, we know that there are hydrogen bonds between the bases, and they join these two strands together. You absolutely do have to know that adenine pairs up with thymine, and that cytosine pairs up with guanine. 
Um, those hydrogen bonds are important because they are the weaker of the, the weakest, not the weakest, that's Van der Waals, but the weaker of the bonds in biology. And so that way when the DNA strand needs to unzip, it can do so and then rezip, if that's a thing, um, pretty easily. So in uh, copying DNA in replication, the two strands of the DNA helix are complementary. Does it mean that they're like, hey, you're, you're really good looking. Like, hey, well, you're really smart. No, that has an I in it. Complementary means that they um, match up to one another. So one strand, there's a guanine. The other strand, there's a cytosine. Um, adenine on one strand, thymine on the other. So if you have one strand, you could build the other strand. Um, so the way that replication works is that if you have one strand, you could rebuild the whole double helix. Um, and by matching halves, this is a good system because you don't end up having as many errors. And we'll model that for you in class tomorrow. So let's think about when a cell might copy DNA. When in the life of a cell does DNA have to be copied? And there are two moments during cell reproduction. Um, that's mitosis. So when a cell is splitting. And in gamete production, um, making sex cells. And that's in meiosis, making those things. So um, in discussing DNA replication and the people who have discovered this is kind of a very controversial topic. Um, the credit mostly goes to uh, two gentlemen by the names of James Watson and Francis Crick. And the quote from 1953, when it was um, the era that it was discovered, it has not escaped our notice that the specific pairing we have postulated immediately suggests a possible copying mechanism for the genetic material. So at the same time that the entire structure of the double helix of DNA was discovered, they also um, found out how the helix can be replicated. Um, and again, we'll help model this tomorrow in class. So um, James Watson and Francis Crick are the two gentlemen um, who were um, mostly given credit for discovering the double helix structure of um, DNA as is Maurice Wilkins, who helped to contribute um, to that. So um, there's a little bit of a story there. So in 1962, uh, the Nobel Prize was awarded to Maurice Wilkins, um, James Watson, and Francis Crick for discovering the uh, structure of DNA. Um, however, a, and a scientist was left out of that Nobel Prize, unfortunately, um, and that woman, was Rosalind Franklin, uh, who, whose famous picture, um, the X-ray crystallography picture of DNA, this one right here, uh, was given to James Watson and Francis Crick without her permission and led them to discover the uh, double helix nature of DNA. Um, and the person who gave this picture to them was this guy. Um, and it's really quite a story. Um, the, the reason behind, they say that she did not get the Nobel Prize is because she died before the prize was awarded. She died in 1958 um, due to cancer, unfortunately. Um, and they don't award Nobel Prizes to people who have deceased. Um, however, James Watson in his book, The Double Helix, where he discusses um, discovering the structure just talks about how Rosalind Franklin um, did not cooperate um, with giving him the picture. And frankly, I don't see why she would because he discussed how um, he would have taken her more seriously if she had bothered to wear lipstick. So there's just a little interesting piece of information for you. Back to biology. A little interesting note, the ratio of um, adenine to thymine and guanine to cytosine affects the stability of the DNA molecule. And that has to do with the fact that for every adenine thymine, there's two hydrogen bonds. And for every guanine cytosine pairing, there's three hydrogen bonds. Um, so 
the more um, guanine to cytosine there is in your strand of particular DNA that you're looking at, you need to use a higher temperature to separate those strands. So that has implications in biotechnology procedures, which we'll discuss further in our biotechnology unit, but just something to think about. Um, and also it has implications for organisms that exist at higher temperatures. They have more guanine and cytosine in their DNA than um, adenine and thymine. Um, and parasites have lots of adenine and thymine and it's still kind of not known why that is. Um, another interesting note is that adenosine triphosphate, ATP, our energy carrier, is a check that out, nucleotide, right? Here you have your pentose sugar, your five carbon sugar, your phosphate group, and adenine, your nitrogenous base. And uh, it is a triphosphate, it does have three phosphate groups on there, so we do call it a modified nucleotide. Um, so it's um, AMP, adenine, with plus two uh, more phosphate groups. And there's a fun bike rack. I wish I had that. And that is that for nucleic acids. Be sure to pay attention in class tomorrow when we make our own DNA. Not like our own DNA, but a model of DNA. Have a great night.